Well, good morning, folks. Uh, we're going to have a simple, hopefully, and somewhat short uh, for a Miyagi Mornings episode today. Uh, as I'm checking the other feeds, I am uh, operational on float. The, the resolution looks a little sketchy over there. Let's check on Odyssey. I know I'm running on YouTube because I see y'all coming in and, and what have you on the headcount on StreamYard. But we're going to be talking about routines today and uh, how I think they're really important to, uh, to get things done, especially as an entrepreneur. But this will apply if you're not an entrepreneur, if that's not your goal in life. If you want to stay an employee for life, I think that sucks. But if that's what you want, this will apply to you as well. Uh, specifically in being entrepreneurial in your employment, which as someone who's employed a lot of people over the years, that makes you valuable. The most valuable people I ever had work for me were entrepreneurial people uh, that also wanted to be employees. The, 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 I would say that's the second most valuable. The most valuable people that ever worked for me in the short term were entrepreneurial people that wanted to be entrepreneurs. But they leave. <laughs> Once they get good enough at what they do, they they go do it for themselves. So it's a it's kind of splitting hairs there. Like I like the entrepreneurial minded person who wants to be an employee if I want employees because they don't leave, right? Anyway, uh, as always, stalling just a little bit. We got uh, just about four folks popping in over on Odyssey right away. Over on Float, which is becoming pretty popular, not today. Only three of you guys are on float. I did give you guys a little less lead up notice today um, with uh, the time of the podcast. I am out of my routine today, ironically, and off schedule a little bit. I already contacted our guest, and some of you guys like finding out about our guest. We're going to be talking to Jason, Jason Schaller today about building a content-based business in the firearms industry primarily using YouTube where they're not exactly friendly to that. I, I think it's interesting, just as an aside before we get started, how many of the big firearms channels on YouTube have not been deplatformed? I, I always thought those guys would, would you know, get bumped off. You know, uh, Hickok, uh, nothing fancy, all those guys. I always thought that, like, you know, YouTube's going to – but no, they, they pretty much – as far as I know, left them alone. I, I don't know. Before we get started, I also just wanted to throw out this for those that can see it, right? I am not responsible for what my face does when you talk. This was given to me by a gift of a good friend, and uh, apparently it fits my personality. I don't know. All right, so you guys ready? Let's go. Okay. Of course I'm stalling, Joe. Why? See, this is the thing about live streaming. You start a live stream and you see like one person, then three, then six, and then 20. And if you start before you let that number come up, all those people don't get to be here from the beginning of the actual content. So yeah, we're going to we're gonna roll right now, though, as we start the uh, podcast version of Miyagi Mornings for the recap on Friday. Start the other recorder and we will go so that Joe is happy because we don't want to inconvenience Joe. We don't want Joe to be annoyed, do we, Joe? No, <laughs> just messing with you. All right, here we go. Well, hi, folks. Welcome to Miyagi Mornings 158. Uh, 158 times now we've gotten together for Miyagi Mornings. And today, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the importance of a routine, specifically from my vantage point as an entrepreneur, because I think there's a, there's a, a thing that you need to do as an entrepreneur when it comes to routines, because nobody's doing it for you. And I think this also applies to, if you work from home, you need this too, big time. My first job working from home was well over 20 years ago. And uh, it was in sales. And once I started working in sales, basically they say, here's your quota. Here's your territory or limitations. Here's the flexibility of deals you can make with uh, out getting uh, approval. And Here's the threshold where you need to ask us for approval and go. And as long as number go up and number meet quota, they leave you alone, which is great. Uh, and I, then even when I wasn't in like uh, that kind of capacity, as I moved into marketing, what have you, I had enough kind of clout in any position I had after that, that if I wanted to work from home for a few days, I could do it. If I wanted to uh, take a vacation, 
whether I had time or not to do it with, I could just do it. Like I had so much flexibility uh, and, you know, up until the time where I started the survival podcast, when you own the company, you can kind of do what you want. Right. So in all of those things from employees with all that flexibility, work from home environments, ton of y'all are doing that now uh, to completely working for yourself, to running a company. Um, this is something that kind of is necessary in my opinion uh, for you to install for yourself, because what all of a sudden happens is whatever was providing you with a routine goes away. So think about, you know, Bob has a job. Bob has to be to work at eight o'clock. Bob works till five o'clock. Bob gets a lunch break. Bob gets a, um, you know, maybe a break between showing up at lunchtime and sometime between lunchtime and, 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 and being off for the day, he gets another break. Bob has a meeting every Thursday. Bob has uh, some report due every Tuesday, et cetera. So like without even saying, Bob, here's your routine, these things that Bob is held accountable to and somebody says, if you don't do this, you're going to get fucking fired, Bob. Bob ends up with a routine and it even creates a routine just off the edges of Bob's day. So Bob has to be to work by eight. And it takes Bob 30 minutes to get to work. And Bob has to show up, show up not dressed like a slob. Then Bob has to get up at a certain time, get himself ready, feed himself, get his kids off to school, et cetera, get in the car, get to work. And at the end of the day, Bob has to get home. And then that's going to cascade into setting kind of, well, what time does Bob eat dinner? When does Bob's wife get home? When are the kids? Like, you see what I'm saying? It's so like the average person, and, and this is what I've talked about, and this is why I hate you know, normal has a, a, a routine devised for them because their life has been designed on their behalf by somebody else. And that sucks. But at least what it does is Bob gets his ass up Monday through Friday at this time. Bob has a certain amount of value then in his mind to his weekends and his days off and his vacations, etc. And so everything kind of flows for Bob. So then Bob like works his ass off, maybe starts a side hustle, gets that up and running and then realizes, hey, I have enough income. I don't have to work for these assholes anymore. And he quits. OK, or Bob finagles himself kind of up the ranks. And like Jack, he gets a job in sales. They give him a territory of five states, company's headquartered in the West Coast. Bob has like the Northeast. So Bob works out of his house. They give him an expense account. Go be fruitful and multiply. And anything like that, right, all of a sudden Bob doesn't have somebody telling him when to get out of bed anymore. All of a sudden Bob doesn't have somebody, like, even when you're working for people that way, the amount of, like, reporting you do in is going to be pretty limited. Like, you're going to have certain things you report in on, et cetera, but it's not going to be, like, every week at Tuesday you have to meet with the whole team. It's usually not that way anymore, right? And so what happens is the ed, the bookends fall off the shelf, and then the books go, is kind of what happens, right? So we have to install a routine for ourselves. And having kind of come up with employment to the freedom of sales to freedom of entrepreneurship, I kind of had this gradual shift, and it was really natural for me. But I've, I've known a lot of people along the way that it wasn't. I, I've noticed that a lot of people that kind of move into sales or some sort of sales support or position where they have a territory and they can travel. A lot of time, those people are really good at their jobs before that. And within a year to two into that, they get fired because they're not getting their job done. And part of it's that routine. And I've also noticed people that sometimes they like, they do a really good execution of a side hustle. And then what happens is they go full time and the business stays the size it was when it was a part-time business, in spite of the fact that they're working on it full-time. And I mean, they actually are. Like, they were working this business like two, three hours a day and killing themselves and putting in nine, 10 hours a day in a job. Now they actually are doing something. They're active with their business eight hours a day. The business is not growing any faster than it was before they did it, which means they've, they've gotten on a stationary bike and started pedaling really hard but they expect the bike to go somewhere. And generally to me, that comes from not having a routine. So I think it is absolutely the case that you will be better off with some sort of routine in your life. And a lot of times people that are kind of free spirited, whatever, they don't like that. 
because you can't tell me what to do. Dude, nobody's telling you what to do. What we're talking about is being accountable to thyself. And to me, one of the things that since I've, you know, completely immersed myself in podcasting has helped me stay within my routine. It's not just having one, but having something that initiates movement in the morning that is non-optional. And I, you can make that non-optional however you want. I've done it with livestock. Every morning, I have to go out to the house that's kind of out behind me here. And I have to open this door so all the quack, the quacking can be released, right? The ducks come out. And when they come out, then they're happy. And if they don't come out, then they're sad. And if I leave them in there, it starts to get really hot and then they can die. And then they have to have water. So I have their water tanks and I move them wherever they are and I fill them up in the morning. And during that, I listen to podcasts or other uh, content, maybe audiobooks or whatever to, to kind of get my mind going and to learn something. So I'm not wasting that time. I got little baby birds. They have to come out. I've got some young birds that are out in the aviary, but rats and stuff can get in there and they're still really little and I don't want them to die. So they got to get put away every night. That means they're confined and they have to come out into the aviary. And then everybody has to be fed because if I don't feed them, they get really angry at me and I could get eaten by ducks or they could die. Right. So I have to do that. Uh, my dogs go out every day. Uh, I pet them. Yeah. You know, welcome them in the day. Like the, having a living thing in your life that requires attention initiates momentum. And to me, like the hardest thing for most people with maintaining a routine isn't maintaining the routine in of itself. It's the first step in initiating that routine for the day. So when you get up and you do something that's part of the routine, it starts a process. So it's very natural for me then that you know, and part of my routine is I make coffee every morning. So I get up, I put the coffee on the boil, right? I put the coffee in the, the French press. And then it's going to take time for the water to boil. So in that time, I walk out, I let the birds out, I make sure the dogs go out with me. I go out to the aviary, I let the babies out. I go to the garage, I grab the feed, I dump the feed in the, in the feed containers, right, for the birds to eat. I come back in the house, the water has boiled, the water goes into the French press, boom, and I am now in motion. You know, then maybe I'll use the bathroom while it seeps in and then come back out and then pour a cup of coffee. I'll sit down on the couch and I'll review and do my initial social media for, you know, the, 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 the day, like check things from the night before, put some stuff out, communicate with you guys, have one cup of coffee. Then I'll pick something to listen to, put my headphones on, throw my headphones on, try to get out the door before the wife gets back with the kids so I'm not interrupted in my routine. Go out there, fill all the tanks. That takes about 30 minutes. I get 30 minutes of good quality information, and maybe I rehearse. Like if, if something makes me think of something, I'm like, I should put that in Miyagi. I should put that in the podcast. Then I'll pause that, and I'll actually stand out there like a, like a, like a raving lunatic, probably talking louder than I should because my headphones are unlucky. I have no close neighbors. And I'll actually rehearse as though I'm delivering the content. I get that in my mind. Then I come inside. First thing I do, email. Boom, knock that email out. Boom, run the item of the day. Boom, let's set up and get ready to do and stream Miyagi mornings. Next, do the podcast, whether it's an interview, standalone, what have you. Market all that stuff throughout the day. Like there's, there's, there's certain things that I hold myself accountable to throughout the day that have to get done. And that's why... If you are on Telegram every day, you'll get an alert. Here's the item of the day. You'll get an alert. Miyagi Mornings is going to be live in 15 minutes. You'll get an alert. Miyagi Mornings is done. You missed the live, but here's the archive, right? You'll get an alert. The podcast is out. You'll get, you know, these things are going to show up for you. If you're on the email list, somewhere between two and four, based on when I get done, how long it takes that day. You're going to get an email. Here's what's new at this. And all that stuff's going to be in that email. And that doesn't happen without a routine. And then the routine also has to have procedures built into the routine. So like when somebody wants to be on the show, I'll get an email from somebody. Hey, I really would like to be on the show. Fill out the guest form. But I'm so-and-so and I'm important and I do this and that. And I've been on MSNBC or whatever. Great. Love to hear your pitch. Fill out the guest form. But I never mind. We don't want you. It's not personal. It's the guest form comes. The guest form gives all the details and data that another party in the business needs 
to book the guest and make sure that we're all on the same page and we are all going to be on the same page on the same day. We know the right time, the right place, and the right means to communicate with each other to get the interview done. And we're talking about the same thing. We both are of the same mind as to what we're talking about. If you can't do that, boom, you're out of the routine. You refuse to work inside the routine with the entity you want to work with. You're done. And that's another part of your routine, right? Another part of your routine is once you set this routine, you create this bubble. Now, that doesn't mean you're an inflexible asshole. It doesn't mean if, if your neighbor calls you up and says, hey, man, um, I'm in deep shit. I need your help. And it's something you can help with. That you're like, I'm sorry. My routine says I have to take a dump now. I don't mean that. But when somebody wants to come inside the bubble and you have procedures within the routine inside the bubble of your operation, either you do those things or away you go. You don't come in the bubble. And if you don't follow that, bad shit happens. Things start to break down. I remember there were some times that Dorothy made some exceptions for people because they were nice and we knew them. And I'm like, no, the business has procedures. This it, 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 It's not about me being mad or anything. It's about if we break procedure within this routine, since the whole thing operates on a routine, then it's going to throw things off and there's going to be miscommunications, misunderstandings and, and misalignments. And we're not going to get everything done every day. And that's and, and those of you that don't run a business or whatever, that same thing is at play in your life on some level at all times. And it always will be. In a way. <laughs> It works this way. You, you don't have a choice in this matter. You just have a choice with how you handle it. It's like permaculture. Sometimes you'll talk to people about permaculture and you'll say, well, when we, we look at designing um, a system, we have seven layers in that system. You know, we have a, a canopy layer of trees, a sub canopy layer of trees, vines, rhizomes, etc." bushes and shrubs and herbs. We have all these seven layers in this system. And they may say something like, I don't want to do permaculture. I don't want seven layers. No, the seven layers exist. They are, they are, they are definitions within the framework of space time, right? You have this space time, this, these three dimensions of space and this, as we understand it, human nature, linear concept of time. Those things will fill in with something. And the only choices you'll have to maintain them with permaculture is either to fill them with what you want or to mechanically remove that which shows up to occupy the space. The only reason your lawn doesn't turn into a forest is you mow it. So you're able to have basically an herbaceous layer and a root layer, a rhizome layer, and maintain that. But the only way you can do that is either with grazing animals or a lawnmower or a scythe. And if you do nothing... Nature will send all seven layers. Well, uh, routine works like this. You're going to have a routine. It's just either going to be organized and productive or disorganized and non-productive. So I think that when people are like, well, I don't want a routine, well, you probably have one. It's probably being a jack off all day and not getting anything done and then bitching about why you don't have what you want. I know that sounds harsh, but guys, it's, it's freaking reality, man. Um, the, the thumbnail for today's video, and I don't remember the exact quote. I'm trying to pull it up right now so I say it right so I don't miss. I don't like misquoting people, but Paula White said, your future is found in your daily routine. Successful people do daily what others do occasionally. And I think there's a lot to that. It's a lot about what I'm saying. That's why I picked it for today. But I think it's bigger than that. It's not just having a routine and doing things consistently that makes a person successful. It's doing the right things consistently because plenty of people have that routine we started at, the book and routine. You have a job. You work for an asshole named Jack Spirico. You show up on time or he fires you. That creates your routine and that routine is designed for whose success. If you work for me and I designed your routine by putting limitations and parameters on your day, and then I pay you once a week at the end of the week a paycheck. Whose success did I design that routine for? And it's not because I'm an asshole. It's because all humans that get what they want anyway, and all humans, period, really, 
tend to act in their self-interest. So if I hire you and I'm paying you $500, $1,000 a week, something like that, to work for me, am I more concerned about your success in life in general or your success as my employee that gets my work done that I need to grow my business? I'm putting together a routine for you to manage you as an employee to my benefit. And I have every right to do that because I'm paying the bill. Okay. You don't have to take that approach though. Even if you work for somebody else, you, because what I love is when you're like, oh, that guy doesn't need a freaking routine. In fact, if I force a routine on him, I get less out of him. Holy shit. Let him go. And that's how even those of you that are going to stay employees, you can not just excel above your superiors, but you can literally bury them. It, it's a matter of finding the right employer that recognizes that in you, and you won't get recognized with that in two weeks. It will take time. It will take, you will have to demonstrate it outside of the boundaries you're initially given. You're going to have to be the guy that's five o'clock, and I go, hey, Tom, why aren't you leaving? And you go, I got some, some stuff to, to work on. And I could walk out the door at five. You could walk out the door at 515. You've made a bigger impression on me, the guy that kissed my ass all day long, that I'm ready to fire for kissing my ass all day long. And if you do that enough, then all of a sudden the person that you're working for or the company you're working for says, give this person more freedom and let's see what they can do. And so whether you're doing it for yourself, you're kind of in the middle with work from home or you know sales territory or whatever, or if you're doing it as a pure employee, if you really want to get what you want, stop letting other people set this routine for you because when they design it for you, they're designing it for themselves, not for you. With that, let's go ahead and wrap things up, and we will be back tomorrow with another subject. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. That was fun. Haven't kind of gone in that vein for a while. I don't think we've ever gone in that vein with uh, Miyagi Mornings, but uh, dead on, man, guys. Um, set up some sort of routine for yourselves. And, and I really do think like even having like a dog and a dog has to be like paid attention to it, taken for a walk and fed and watered every day. Like to me, and then when you have something that must be done, right? If it's not time sensitive to the point where it has to be done at a specific time, like maybe you have something that has to be done at four o'clock in the afternoon. That's not what I'm talking about. It has to happen, but it also has to happen four o'clock or later. Okay, that's different. If you have time flexibility in a thing that simply must be done, something will break, something will die, somebody will get fired, someone will get hurt, like bad shit will happen if this thing does not happen every day. Number one, if you can, automate it. Because <laughs> that's the shit to automate, right? What would you do if you didn't have to do it? But number two, if it's something you have to do, put it at the beginning of the schedule because there's nothing like motion to create motion. So when, when, when I wake up, like when I had a job and I had to be at work by, you know, seven or I was going to get fired, then when the thing went off at six o'clock, I got out of bed so I can get fired. Well, now I get out of bed about quarter to seven. Do you know why? It's when I wake up. It's my circadian rhythm. But there's days where you wake up and you're like, <sighs> you look at the window. No, you look at the clock. You look at the window and light's coming in. I say it's light out. And you just feel eh, it's it's around seven ish. Got to get up. And there's days where you're like, you know, screw it. I no one's gonna know. No one's gonna care. It doesn't matter. I can use the next thirty minutes of sleep today. And then you know what I think, dude? You gotta let the birds out. It's getting hot, cold, depending on what time of year. Just like you know, they they need to come out. <sighs> get up, take a leak, let the birds out. Usually, even if my mind is, when I put my feet on the floor, throw a pair of slip-on shoes on and head out to do that, as soon as I do that, I'm going to come back, crawl on the bed, and get another 30 minutes before I get up. It never happens because the motion begats mo As soon as you do that, you know, mm, yeah, coffee. Mm. Uh, go ahead and put the hot water on at least anyway so it's boiling. But Okay, now you have a cup of coffee. Like It's on, and that day's in motion, and it's going to happen, and to me, anything like that is uh, is a good way to go. Josh says, what about applying Dave Ramsey approach of tracking every penny with tracking every hour you're working? Uh, maybe if that works for you. I hate that idea. I don't want to track every hour I'm working. Um, 
I create these metrics for myself. And when this thing is done, this thing is begun. And then when this thing is done, this thing is begun. And if I'm going to build a break or something into the day, then once this thing occurs, then this break can occur. Or this, a lot of times I'll take a walk in the middle of the day and I will think it, but I, I don't want to track every minute of every day. I don't want to, I don't want to micromanage you. So I damn sure I'm not going to micromanage me. And I think the, I, 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 I call this approach macro management actually. And I, it's how, how I believe we should manage ourselves, but it's also, I believe how you should manage people. And when you manage people with macro management and the person working for you can't get everything done. And now if they need some remedial training or something, they don't know how to do a thing. That's different. But once, once they have the basic skills to physically mentally do their job, if macro management is not enough for you and you work for me, guess what you get to do? You get to go work for somebody else. Because I think if you require micromanagement, then you are not mature enough to work for me and you're damn sure not mature enough to work for yourself. That's my thoughts. Uh, Joe says, when I had ducks, uh, they were stir crazy if they were not let out by 8 a.m. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know who has a routine? Ducks. If you, if you feed your ducks at a certain time every day and you ain't fed them and it's 15 minutes late when you go out there to feed them, don't fall the hell over when you're on your way to dump the food in the trough. They say pigs will eat people. I, I've never seen it, but I believe if you get enough ducks <laughs> and you fall over and you ain't fed them 15 minutes late, they're going to eat you. They don't like when strangers come. They don't like being let out later. Like They're, they're a routine-based uh, animal. It's what's cool because when it's time to go to bed, it's not necessarily a time thing. It's okay. It is dark. Here comes the giant. Get in the house. Like as soon as they see you, like oh shit, here he comes. Let's go. Boom. It's like you know when the boss is coming, pretend to work that type of thing. Death by ducks. That would be cool. Anyway, guys, I gotta go. Um, I did get a little bit off sequence in time today, even though so I'm on my routine from a functional standpoint, but not from a temporal standpoint. So I'm going to wrap up with you guys real quick. I will check the other services. No, Nobody said shit on Odyssey today. Of course, I'm not logged in, so I don't know if I'm uh, not seeing that. And I don't see anything on float except for Dodo Bird said yesterday's guest was badass. I think yesterday's guest was the kind of guest that probably half of you loved. Half of the other half were like, he's okay. And then about a quarter of the total audience were like, that sucked. But I think that like, if we're going to have variety and guests, that will happen at time. 100 horse-sized ducks or one duck-sized horse. <laughs> I don't know, man. You guys have a great day. And uh, podcast uh, will start a half hour late today. It's 1230, so it's 1.30, 1.30. I'm going to say it's going to be probably right around 3 o'clock Central Time, 1,500 hours for you military types that the podcast will be up for today. And again... We are talking with uh, Jason Schaller on building a content-based business in the firearms world. He has been an FFL for 10 years, and uh, he has some interesting stuff to talk about with us today, so we'll chat about that. Maybe we'll ask him when the hell we're going to be able to find ammo in quantity again. Take care, guys. Bye.